Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Epson XP3200 multifunction printer. What I want to do today, first of all get it unboxed, show you through the setup process, and I'll give you a couple of demonstrations as to hopefully how well it can perform. Just for our start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up. So really the first thing I need to do is to get the printer unboxed. Now, I must say, I've had quite a few Epson printers over the years, and I've always gotten really well with them. Um, I think it's just how, how easy they are to use. Uh, on the whole, things like the setup processes have been normally pretty good. So hopefully this one will be as easy. Let's just stand up for this. So there's a small amount of packaging. There we go, one printer. Just pop the box down there out of the way. Uh, I've got some instructions there. Let's, let's have a look. Now, there are different, I suppose, ways you can um, buy the ink for this. Uh, there is a, clearly you can just go and buy the cartridges and with the printer, you'll get some small cartridges with it. Uh, these are normally the, the smaller versions. There are the, as you can see on the side, it says 604 and 604XL. Uh, yeah, there are different size inks that you can buy. I suppose really depending how much printing you're going to do. Uh, there is also a subscription service that Epson offer. Um, it, clearly, if you just go onto the Epson website, then I suppose if you do a lot of printing, so if you're going to use it, um, so if you're doing a lot of printing for kids' homework or a business, something like that, then perhaps things like the subscription service may be a better option for you. Whereas for other people, if you don't tend to use it that much, then perhaps the just buying them when you need them could be a better option for you. But anyway. So let's just take the, get the tape off the side. This is all just is what they call transit tape. It just keeps everything together while it's moving around. Last thing you want to do is to, um, when it's when it's moving around for any bits to start moving or breaking off. Because some of these parts of like at the back here looks looks quite delicate. That's, that just sort of pops out there. That's it. So Got. Oh, we've got quite a bit of tape around the front here. There we go. Just get, get all of that off. There we go, a clear film on the front. I think we are on the home stretch with the blue tape or mission blue tape. There we are. So, I've got all that done. No, nope, still got some around the side. <laughs> That's the lid. Uh, there we go. Right, at the bit inside. So, final check. Have we got rid of all the blue tape? Can't see any inside. And just for our start the setup process, while I think about it, I'm just going to measure the printer for you. Because uh, for some people, if it's going to sit, say, on a desk or on a worktop, then uh, it could be the case that you know, sizes could be really important for you. So the, the size of it, so width-wise, you're looking just under 15 inches or about 38 centimetres. Uh, as far as the, the depth, so front to back, 30 centimetres or just under 12 inches. And then the height of it, you're looking about six and a half inches or about 17 centimetres. So just have a have a quick measure because I know sometimes I mean, where I'm going to put it, it's quite limited in space and I have to have a quick measure to make sure it will fit in. Uh, something else to bear in mind is that sometimes if you are going to put, uh, say, paper at the back, so you normally load the, the paper in at the front, but if you are going to have paper printing out at the back, then that could be something to consider as well. And um, what I will do is I will just measure that as well. So. If you're going to take that part into account, then really you're looking at, I'd say allow, say 15 inches, 
or around 38 centimeters for the depth of it if you are going to sit it in quite a confined area. So really what I need to do is to get this connected up, get the mains connected. Now, something I've always liked about these kind of printers, and to be fair, majority of printers are like it now, where it's got Wi-Fi built in. Uh, last thing you want to be doing is to having to put this near to your router and connecting it up or hardwire in it. That's quite uh, pretty old school nowadays, and I know some people still want to do it. But, uh, let's just plug that in a bit further than I thought. Anyway, we're all done. So we've got the mains connected now. And what you should do, really, there is a, an app that you can download. Uh, it's called the Epson Smart Panel. And it's something that I've downloaded onto my phone. Uh, so whether you use an Android or Apple device, doesn't matter. Uh, just download it onto your phone and then that will give you the ability to control a lot of the functions through the printer um, and Also, you can so if you want to print something from your phone So if you've taken a, a picture and then you can print it through the printer as well ever so easy uh, I've used it before with another printer works a treat and that's hopefully what I'm going to try with this one So when you first turn the printer on um, the writing is quite small in here, uh, to be fair it's a, it's a 3.7 centimetre LCD screen. I suppose majority of the time you're not really going to be using that kind of screen, especially if you're going to use it or use the controllability from your phone or your tablet. Um, you've got quite a few buttons on the front here, um, so you, you can control the menus if you want to. Uh, so all I want to do is, I'm actually going to start the setup process through my phone. So. I've, I've downloaded the Epson Smart Panel app. So that all, all I've done is I've just reset this up. So set up a new product, uh, share the smartphone's Bluetooth information to set up. Yeah, let's go ahead with that. So continue. Uh, we don't need the USB cable. So it's just searching for, select the product. Wow, that was quick. It's already found the XP3200, do you want to set that up? Yes. Right, so please wait. Get ready for ink initialization. Continue. So it's going to take me through the step-by-step -step guide. Continue. So before we start, make sure you follow these rules. Stay in front of the printer. Do not turn off the printer while setting up. So I can hear it whirring away at the moment. I haven't actually put the ink in, uh, so that will be very interesting to see. Hopefully it will recognise that the cartridges are not in there yet. That's it. Yeah, so it's recognised that. So let's start with the inks. Refer to the image below and open the scanner unit. Insert the ink cartridges. Uh, this should be a, well, it's quite a relatively simple process to uh, pop them in. Uh, all I've done is I've, I've just opened them all because they're all in individual packets. It does say just to give them a quick shake before you put them in. So I suppose if it's been sat in transit for a while then the ink may have settled. Anyway, so all we need to do is to lift this up and I will just, I'm just going to zoom in here. Let's just move the Come around for you. There we are. So you can see it's clearly labelled in here as to the, the cartridges. Um, all I'll do is I'll just work from right to left. I'm sure it doesn't matter which way around it goes. There we go, that's the cyan one in there, and then black at the end. So there we are. So that's all all of the, just zoom out a little bit. So, now we've done that. So we've got all of the, all of the cartridges in there. Yeah, it doesn't really matter which way, which way around you do it. And throughout this whole process, uh, it's just showing you which uh, just to put everything in. So now I've now I've done that. Then you lift it up a little bit. Then that pops down. 
and then lift it up once more and then you're completely down. So let's start the ink at the bottom. Just says start the ink initialization. There we are. It's just starting to, to bumble away there. Just give me the opportunity to clear some of these, these little bits up. So this will normally take, I think it's normally a couple of minutes to go through. Um, initializing ink, that's just saying. Yeah, so what you can do is if you want to, if you had to go and do something else, then you can just, um, it can send you a notification, just say when it's done. I think that's a, a really good idea. So it's just saying while the ink is initializing, let's connect the printer to the Wi-Fi. So let's go. Connect to the Wi-Fi, yes. I was just about to use this opportunity to go and put the kettle on, but I think I'm going to I'm gonna wait. Let's uh, let's crack on get the get the setup process done. So it's found the Wi-Fi. So it's found the Wi-Fi code that I've got here. That was really quick. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the, my Wi-Fi code. So I've just finished putting the Wi-Fi code in here. It's just saying wait until the printer's Wi-Fi setting is complete. Uh, it has got a block of progress indicator across the top here as to how far along we are with the, the whole setup. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, it's just saying it's up to about 6% at the moment on the, the Wi-Fi. So I am going to, I'm just going to pause a minute, go and stick the kettle on because I'm gasping for a cup of coffee. There we are. So on the front there, it says initialization complete. Uh, just through the app, it's saying, so preparing settings, wait until the printer's Wi-Fi setting is complete. Now it's saying that the Wi-Fi setup is complete. Smartphone and printer are connected. But the most important job of all, I've got my cup of coffee. Nice strong cup of coffee. Nothing better than that on a a slightly overcast Sunday morning. Mm. Anyway, I'm sorted. Let's get the printer set up. So next, what do we need to do next? So wait until the ink initialization is complete, which I can see on the front display that's sorted. So setup is complete and the printer is ready to use. Next, so, and you can see the, the progress at the top there. So that's, that's almost done. You've got different support. So do you want to connect a computer to your printer? Uh, I might do in the end, but not at the moment. So if you want to follow, if you want to connect your computer, you can do, just follow the instructions. Uh, the setup instructions are also provided. Display the panel home screen next. Right, so here we are. So that's the, uh, this can just take you through the different, uh, I suppose, how you want it to be laid out. Uh, let's go for a, a tile. So let's use tiles. I think that, so latest firmware is available. Do you want to update the firmware? I always think this is really important. Uh, I know it's very tempting to just go, no, I want to crack on with the, the printing, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna up update, the update the firmware, put my teeth back in, sorry. So I'm going to update the firmware for this. Uh, so I just want to try a couple of demonstrations. Uh, I suppose the first one I want to try. So this is the, the layout of the Epson smart panel that I've selected. Uh, the first one I want to select is this one. This is the scan. And I suppose this is good for, um, I don't know, say a, a document or a photo. This is an old photo that I got. That's William, my youngest, and myself. Clearly I've changed quite a bit since then. Uh, but I'm just going to put it into, into the corner there. Uh, I just want to select, so I'm going to select quite a high DPI, so it's 600 DPI, and so I'm just going to pop some paper in at the back there. There we go. Uh, so as I say, I've selected the, the high resolution for this one, just because it's a photo. Uh, because it's the standard paper uh, compared to proper photo printer paper that I've used before and does make a difference, uh, but I just want to give this a go. So let's press start and see what we can come up with. So this will be quite interesting uh, because for the kids, um, you know, think, things like scanning documents or scanning things can be quite a quite a useful thing. 
So this is just going through and scanning at the moment. Not sure if you can hear it through the, especially through the microphone. That's it. And then all I want to do now is just to print. So press the print. There's a lot of different options on here. Uh, I suppose for initially all I want to do is just print it, but I fully, fully understand why they want to give you all these options. Uh, you've got things like the borders, got print quality. So what I want to do, because it's a photo, I want to, I suppose, print this in, in as good a quality as possible, even though the, the paper I'm using is just standard A4 uh, paper on here. So I think let's just, let's just crack on with it. Let's get the printer going. And I should have said at the beginning, just bring that out. Clearly it doesn't really matter at the moment because it's just sitting on the table, but I'd always recommend bringing that out because it just means if it's hanging over the edge of a table, then it just means when the, when the paper comes out, it lands within the tray of the printer. There we are. So that's it done. And what I'll do, let's get the original out. And bear in mind, these, these photos is years and years old. So that's the, that's the original one. Then that's the printer. So that's the printed one. I must say, I'm actually really, really impressed. Uh, not by the look of me. I think I've, um, I've changed quite a bit. I was a lot thinner back in those days. But uh, anyway, the, I think the overall resolution of it is actually really good considering that is standard paper that I've just printed it on. So if you needed print in an emergency, then that's, I would say that's more than good enough. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, let's just go back to the home. So I'll just give you another demonstration. So I want to print something. And I think for a lot of people, probably what they are going to do is they're going to print photos off your phone. So I'm just going to have a look. Let's find a picture. So this is one. Uh, I stayed in a fantastic location recently. Uh, this is something you might see come up soon uh, through one of my YouTube channels. Uh, but I'm going to print this one. So this is me. I stayed at somewhere called a, a Castle of Folly over in Warwickshire. Uh, the location was absolutely stunning. Uh, but I'm just going to print this photo because this is one that I took a handful of days ago. Um, I must admit, it's not the quickest printing. Uh, that's not really the object of the exercise at the moment. I think for me, especially when you print in a photo, then the quality and the, uh, the clarity of it is a bit more important than just the speed of the printing. Uh, but I think once I've done this, then uh, if I was just printing documents, because I know my kids are going to use this quite a lot for printing homework and things out, then I would change the setting back to more of a standard setting, because if all you're doing is just printing out, say, a black and white document, you don't need it to be a really, really high resolution. And just while it's printing, I will sort of go through some of the other features. Uh, clearly you've got, oh, there we are. So I must say that's, hopefully that's in view there. That's just me stood outside this little castle folly. That was just a selfie I took. And actually, again, I'm really impressed. You can see a lot of the the brick detail in here. Uh, unfortunately, you can see some of the wrinkles on my face, which is never a good thing. Uh, but even down to the details in things like the branches and my hair. So yet again, really, really impressed with, um, I suppose, how it's printed that. So I suppose now I've got it all set up and ready to go, and I've just showed you how well it can print. Uh, I just really wanted to cover some of the other little bits about it. Um, I did just start to mention about the double-sided printing. Uh, that's something I wanted in a printer. Um, it's something I'd always have a look at when, when you buy a printer, because not all printers can print double-sided. Uh, but if you are going to print quite a few documents, um, I know my kids are printing quite a lot at the moment, uh, going through some of the um, senior years of school and college, then uh, because they're printing a lot, then if you can print double-sided, then that can save a lot of paper. Um, also, the individual inks. I just showed you got the four individual ink cartridges. I think that's really good. Uh, I'm not too keen on uh, like the the multi ink cartridges, because if one of them runs out, then you end up replacing it all. Whereas at least with this one, uh, if say, if just the black runs out, you can just replace the black. I think the mobile printing is a fantastic option. Uh, personally for me, that would have to be a must now when I buy a printer. 
um, whether you're using the Epson Smart Panel or even you've got things like the Apple AirPrints. So if you've got an Apple device, then that's probably the way to go. Uh, when it comes to the speed of the printing, I know I've shown you printing photos out there. Um, that wasn't the quickest, but I must say I'm really, really impressed with the quality. And as I mentioned, that's really a higher priority than printing it quickly. Uh, as far as the speed of this, it has got the ability to print up to 15 pages a minute in colour or up to 27 pages a minute in black and white. Um, I'm not quite sure how it could print that quick in black and white. Clearly there's not going to be a huge amount of inf inf information on the page if it's going to print a page almost every two seconds, but that's what it says in the, the specification, so that is really impressive. Anyway, if you are thinking of buying one of these, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Epson XP3200 multifunction printer. I know it's not a long video, there's a, quite a lot of demonstrations I could have done, perhaps comparing it with another printer um, or showing you the, the full range of specification, uh, but I just wanted to try and keep it short and sweet just to give you a quick demo. And I think some of the some of the demonstrations I've given you have actually, I'm really impressed with how it's performed. Anyway, uh, all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up, leave any comments below on the video. I always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad about the video. If you've got any questions on this, then this is actually going to be one going to be using at home. So if you've got any questions, then just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you have got this printer, or if you've got a similar one to this in the Epson range, then let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Anyway, I'm going to go and enjoy my cup of coffee. Have a great afternoon, and thanks for joining me.